This is Think Smart with TMFG, your weekly podcast of what's newsworthy and relevant to everyday Canadians. With your host, Senior Financial Advisor Rob McClelland and Mike Conan of Asante Capital Management. This week on Think Smart with TMFG, Mike and I are going to be discussing the future of real estate. Mike, you've been giving us a lot of thought lately, and you're thinking that maybe we're headed in a different direction. So it's interesting. The government's main focus in the last, I'd say, six months, real estate's been a big issue. That's all you hear in the news. And the government has put into place, they said, our goal is to make real estate more affordable. That sounds like a pretty reasonable thing. And everyone would agree that's a good idea, isn't it? But let's what does that mean? More affordable real estate means that in the future, real estate should be cheaper than it is now. Well, if all the government incentives are now to designed to build more houses, to accommodate the increasing demand of real estate, at some point, you would think we're going to get into an oversupply of real estate. Well, that's the goal, right? Because we're right now in undersupply, which is obviously tremendously put pressure on prices to go upward beyond the rate of inflation. So the way that you combat that is you come up with ways and more incentives to make more real estate on the market to bring down the price of real estate. So so the objective, let me, let me understand. So real estate's too high right now. Interest rates are high. So a whole generation of Canadians or a part of a generation of Canadians find owning a home difficult. Unaffordable. And at the same time, we're bringing in hundreds of thousands of new immigrants every year. And we, we know a lot of them want to own their own home. That's one of the reasons for coming to Canada. Who wouldn't? It's the Canadian dream. And so our recent budget is designed to expedite that process of having more houses in the market, which would help to lower the price to satisfy the demand of the new immigrants and our younger Canadians who want their first home. And the other thing I find interesting in the news is, is when people talk about rental rates. Rental rates, of course, they go up, but still rental rates in Toronto compared to the price of the home are cheaper than anywhere else in the world. When I see people buying condos for investment purposes, I've done the number on 50 people doing this in the last two or three years. There's a return that you get. And what we look at is basically we take the rental income you're going to get. I take the monthly one. I multiply by 11, not 12, because you're going to have some vacancies if you're going to rent a place. And then I take the expenses, which would be if it's condo, let's say condo fees, tax, any additional maintenance. And whenever you take those numbers, you find your net rate of return. This is without any carrying costs. They mostly come out between one and one and a half percent. So not a big payback in the GTA rental market. When you go to different markets down the States, it's sometimes six or seven percent. Other places in Canada are the four or five percent, but GTA is pretty low. So let me give you an investment here. So we know the return is somewhere around one and a half percent. So if I was to offer you an investment, and let's say I have a stock, right? And it's going to pay you out one and a half percent dividend. And unfortunately, it's not going to be taxed like dividend income. It's going to be taxed at your top marginal tax rate, but we won't even get into that, right? And the goal of the whole government is make sure that stock you're buying five years from now is worth less than it is today. Would you have any interest in buying that stock? I certainly wouldn't be very excited about it, but I want to own real estate. Yeah. And I, I want some investment real estate. So it's very solid, but if you put that on a stock, no one would be too interested in it. So this is what we're we're going to talk about with the real estate and see if it does make sense and problems that go, go along with it. So let's start with some advantages and disadvantages that real estate do have. Real estate, the problem is a non-liquid investment. Many times we don't really talk about this, but right now we're going through a capital gain change. And the capital gain chains, I know it's unfortunate how they're going to change the inclusion rates and everything on, on stuff, but usually with our clients and stock portfolios that are not corporately held, we can manage this, right? If we want to trigger, they put a $250,000 limit on capital gain inclusion at, at the 50% rate. And if we want to, in the future, keep it under that, we can liquidate parts of people's portfolio and create decent tax strategies. 
We have a lot of clients with real estate. They don't have that choice. If you sell real estate, it's all or nothing. But Mike, we've got a $250,000 sort of freedom that we can earn up to $250,000 gains. Wouldn't most, if we made a good profit on our real estate, be less than that 250000 Well, over the past years, a lot of it has been over that. Well, let's look at it. If we bought a place today, average house price in Toronto's today, a million dollars. Yes. If you held that for 10 years, what would you expect to sell it for? Yeah, probably 10. It's probably a 2000000 million. You'd hope for $2 million? Yep. Which would be about a 7% return yep. over that 10-year period. Yep. And and maybe it's only a million six that you sell it for. Yeah. But if you bought it for a million and you sold it for a million six or you sold it for two million, your capital gain is a lot bigger than 250000 And the problem is, as you said, you can't allocate that over 10 years. You either, you either own the house or you don't, unless you sold off parts of the house. And I don't know anyone that sells off parts of a house. You either own it or you don't own it. You can't manage tax brackets. You can't do anything. So it's it's brutally when it's when it's owned by yourself, even more of a nightmare in a corporation. And we run into that those problems. So what's the problem in a corporation? Well, the corporation doesn't have that first two hundred and fifty thousand free. So if you've got the house inside a corporation and you're trying, you're triggering that capital gain. You're now going to be taxed on sixty seven percent of that gain. So it's huge. And believe it or not, a lot of times this can be considered passive income inside a corporation, which again, has some nasty tax consequences to it. What's one of the big surprises about taxes in the province of Ontario on real estate, investment real estate more specifically? So when you go to sell properties or move them, there's land transfer tax in Ontario. So these are costs. And we talk about you know, we talk about fees on investments and how much people people pay to to invest. So let's talk about the fees they can associate with real estate. The simple one up front is real estate fees. You know, 25 years ago, the mutual fund industry used to charge a 5% commission to go and buy a stock. And I know over time, it's worked itself down to almost nothing. For some reason, real estate seems to be in infancy still. And it's still at that 5 to 6% commission rate to do a transfer for a property. I'm sure eventually that industry will come out pressures like our industry did and bring that down to a, a bit more of a reasonable level. So we could pay up to 5 6%, maybe 5% on getting selling the house. So if we had that $2 million house, 5% of that is going to be $100,000 in real estate commissions. What about the land transfer tax if we sold that $2 million house? What would that be in Ontario? So in Ontario, the first 55000 which seems meaningless, <laughs> the price of a home nowadays, is at 0.5%. The amount up to 250000 beyond that is at 1%. The amount exceeding that 250000 is at 1.5%. And up to $400,000, now we're into the 2%. And above 400000 we're 2.5%. So if you look at the cost, that's a pretty hefty cost because nowadays the homes aren't going for 250. Most of your gains are happening over that 400,000 in that two and a half percent piece. And that that's in Toronto right now. Sorry, I'll go back to my calculations. Two and a half percent is on the amount exceeding $2 million of properties in Toronto. It's 2% on the amount exceeding 400,000. So let's say we're going to be at one and a half percent on that $2 million sale. Yep. One and a half percent on two million, that's pretty simple. That's thirty thousand dollars. So we've got real estate commissions of a hundred thousand dollars. We've got a land transfer fee of thirty thousand dollars. That's before you've figured out your gain. Yeah. So we sold it for two million, we bought it for a million. Now you've got to pay tax on that gain. The first two hundred and fifty thousand is at fifty percent of the gain. The other part is at sixty seven percent. And also remember what happens to your average tax rate that year that you go to sell. You're no longer at maybe your average tax rate of 30% or 40% because your income in that year is so high, you're going to be at 53.5%. You're going to be at the top marginal rate in the province in the year that you sell that property. It's crazy. So, So real estate fees, capital gains tax, Land transfer tax. So let's look at another thing. Let's say in our industry, we have something called IPOs. 
IPOs are called initial public earnings. So that's when a new company comes to market. It's a pretty exciting time when companies come out and everyone bids on them. We don't think they're usually the best investment, but they do come out all the time. So let's talk about new home. When you buy a new home, believe it or not, they're subject to HST. That's 13%. And there's rebates available federally, but they really disappear with any normal priced houses. Again, you know, although the prices keep on going up, Canada wants to accept, think that that's the minority that have all the money, so they don't want to give them any breaks. So most of the breaks happen, you know, under that four hundred fifty thousand dollar mark, and otherwise you're paying you're you're paying HST on that purchase too. So if we're buying a million dollar home, we're probably at least paying an extra seven percent over and above that. Yeah, just in tax. Yep, that's not something you get back. So we're at a dilemma. We've got investors who want to buy second properties, but the taxes are going up, so their profits are going down. We're told the government's going to make it easier for these homes to be built, and yet we already know the building permit department is well behind, and permits are taking longer and longer. We then go to the problem of capacity. Do the builder, Are there enough builders in Canada to build all these homes that we need to increase the supply to lower the house. I don't think the government's thought too much about how this works. Their sole objective is to get more votes by saying we're solving the housing crisis. Yeah, at the end of the day, I don't know if it's going to be the, the best solution. But right now, with would I want, want to jump in that marketplace right now? I, I'm not saying it's going to be a bad one, but there's a lot more unknowns than people realize. That brings us to the end of another week. Thank you for joining us. This is Rob and Mike with Think Smart from the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management, reminding you to subscribe so that you can have your best retirement ever. been listening to the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management Limited. Asante Capital Management Limited is a member of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund and the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. Insurance products and services are provided through Asante Estate and Insurance Services Incorporated. This material is provided for general information and is subject to change without notice. Every effort has been made to compile this material from reliable sources. However, no warranty can be made as to its accuracy or completeness. Before acting on any of the previous information, please make sure to see a professional advisor for individual financial advice based on your personal circumstances. The opinions expressed are those of the authors and not necessarily those of Asante Capital Management Limited.